Uh, good morning. Last lecture of the year. Woohoo. Uh, we're going to get going uh, and finish up the overthrow of Reconstruction. And this will be the conclusion of Chapter 15 um, and next year or this year's uh, course. A uh, couple housekeeping things. Your tests have been emailed to your respective instructors. Uh, tomorrow I will plan for the final to be here. Uh, I have not got everything graded yet. Uh, I'm still lagging behind on that, but I hope to be caught up uh, by at least next Wednesday. So all the grades will be completed before everyone leaves for break. Um, and you, if you want to know your grades and everything, um, you'll have it done. Uh, that being said, tomorrow is the initial date for the, the, the final. If you are gone or sick, the sickness has been hitting us like the plague. Monday and Tuesday are the two makeup days for next week. So that way, like I said, I can get everything completed. Uh, and if you're going to uh, be in this class next semester, it'll be a similar format. Um, hopefully, I'm going to keep tweaking it and make it better. I'm going to look to make the lecture series a little bit more interactive. Hopefully, at some point, it may still be a little bit of time away. But I think this system is not too bad as we have it right now. Uh, the overthrow of Reconstruction, Reconstruction's opponents. The South's traditional leaders bitterly opposed the new government's high taxes also led to resistance. Uh, couldn't stand former slaves voting, holding office, and enjoying equality before the law, and they're going to launch a campaign of violence. So as the blacks uh, and African Americans will gain uh, far more rights in the post-Civil uh, War era between 1865 and 1875, whites are not, southern whites who were obviously super racist and part of the old guard are not going to take this lightly. Uh, there's going to be a reign of terror in the South. Uh, it was mostly local and unorganized initially at first. Uh, but there's going to be a secret society form that you guys have all heard of, and it's the Ku Klux Klan or the KKK. It is 100% a terror group. Their whole purpose is to terrify, uh, even and sometimes kill, uh, African Americans. Uh, they will attack, not attached, attack Republicans, whites and blacks. They will attack Republicans because they're the ones pushing uh, this agenda. The Enforcement Act of 1870 to 1871 outlined terrorist society, societies and allowing the president to use the army against them. This will allow President Grant to authorize the military to go after secret societies such as the Klan um, and destroy them. In 1872, the Klan will be driven out, peace will reign in most of the South again. So the initial reign of the Klan is very short-lived. It is super violent, but it is short-lived. Uh, the Klan will obviously come back later in the history of the United States, which we're not going to get to later. It still exists to this day as an organization. Uh, but the, the fact here is the whole pur purpose of it was to really isolate and persecute blacks. Overthrow of Reconstruction 2. The liberal re uh, Republicans. Yes, that is actually a word. All liberal and conservative actually means in political terms. Liberal means open once advocates more change, conservative, little to no change. So you could have a conservative Republican, a liberal Republican, you could have a conservative Democrat, a liberal Democrat. However, most of our vernacular, we can't say that. Like, for example, John McCain was fairly a fairly liberal Republican compared to many. That being said, uh, commitment to Reconstruction started to wane in the or North during the 1870s. Uh, one thing, the Army remained in the South during Reconstruction. The, um, initially, the Reconstruction had divided the South up. The book goes into a little bit of detail, the military Reconstruction phase, uh, but broke up the South into military districts. So military was in force, uh, enforcing the law in the South. So whites, uh, Southern whites, were forced to adhere to the law and to uh, basically tolerate blacks. Now, Corruption with the Grant administration helped create the liberal Republicans. Also, blacks in the South needed to solve their own problems. They saw, we need to pull uh, out of the South completely. We are reunified. We no longer need military courts, military uh, personnel in the South. Uh, we are now reunified. We don't need to have uh, this separate thing going on. Nominate Horace Greeley for president, badly beaten by Grant. But the point of this is, is they're trying to move towards a more finished product here of the South being brought back into the Union. But brought attention to a new policy for the South, the North's retreat. Uh, the prostate straight and the individual account of visit to South Carolina depicted a state engulfed by political uh, corruption drained by extravagance and under the control of black barbarism. Uh, so this is a reverse, uh, basically talking about oppression by blacks, supposedly. 
1873, economic depression will hit. Railroads are going to make a major nosedive economically. Democrats regain control of the House for the first time in many, many years uh, uh, in 1874, and they're going to start forcing issues to basically bring uh, Reconstruction to an end. Civil Rights Act of 1875 outlawed racial discrimination in places of public accommodation, like hotels and theaters. Uh, now, slaughterhouse cases of 1873, Supreme Court ruled that the 14th Amendment had not altered traditional federalism, which is a hit on some of these civil rights and some of these uh, cases of uh, trying to give more blacks um, uh, basically gutted some of these civil rights gains that blacks had gained in the um, 1860s, 1870s. That being said, uh, the United States versus Chris Shank, uh, the court uh, basically gutted the Enforcement Acts that was basically making the South um, tolerate and adhere to the new reality. The point of this is by the 1870s, we're almost moving to 10 years post Civil War, a decade. People were tired of Civil War talk. They were tired of trying to get out of the Civil War things. People are ready to move on and not forget, but not deal with it anymore. The people that are going to be the victims of this um, are going to be blacks because Northerners had pushed and got a lot of freedom for them. Uh, the economy had stabilized mostly. I mean, blacks had been freed. It didn't cause all upheaval. Uh, but now, by 1875, uh, Northerners are like, you know what? We fixed the problem um, the best we could. Now it's up to them to fix the rest of it. We're tired of it. We're moving on. So the overthrow of Reconstruction Three. Victorious Democrats called themselves Redeemers, redeemed the White South. So the Redeemers will come to influence in the mid-1870s, uh, where Reconstruction governments survived, violence again erupted. Um, Grant administration this time showed no willingness to intervene. At this point, uh, blacks will be openly persecuted again in the South, um, and all the gains that had been achieved are not going to be completely erased, but are going to be greatly reduced. In 1875, the Democrats ended Reconstruction in Mississippi, um, and the rest will follow quickly suit across to the South. In 1877, there's a disputed election and a bargain. Ruth B. Hayes versus Samuel Tilden, the Democrat. There was no clear winner, and it went to the House of Representatives. A very close election. Three states' election were disputed, South Carolina, Louisiana, and Florida. They were set up a commission to decide the election. Uh, they're going to call it the bargain of 1877. This is what they agreed to. Hayes becomes president. He's a Republican. Reconstruction will come to an end across the board. No more Reconstruction. All the military assets, any of the things will be done, completely go home. And de Democrats will supposedly equal honor black equality. That one does fail. And I think the Republicans at this point knew it was going to fail. But instead, they are going to want to win the election for president and move forward. So Tilden loses the election. Hayes is elected. But this... Bargain of 1877, in short, ends Reconstruction as we know it. So you can see the election of 1876, that's a very much different United States. Uh, very, very split. Obviously, the Deep South, for the most part, goes very heavily uh, Democrat. And then the North, uh, predominantly Republican. However, you can see, based off population, electoral votes, very, very close election. No one got a supermajority, uh, and the compromise ultimately is what decides the election. So the end of Reconstruction. During Reconstruction, blacks say the government expanded to protect their rights, though some would lose their rights after it ended in the South specifically. The North will mostly keep their rights. Uh, and despite its limitation, it was remarkable trapped in the story of American freedom as we saw this rapid development for African Americans and the nation as a whole. As we come this course to now to an end, our journey through American history has went through the earliest colonist days as experiments by the British, French, and the Spanish to all the way now we are a nation on the move, expanded greatly. That goes from the Atlantic to the Pacific Ocean. Your overall essay question, a little bit of tidbit here to go with it, ask this question. It says, from the beginning of its creation, how did the colonists and eventually the United States expand? Describe several major events and explain how the United States finally looked at the conclusion at this 
finally looked at the conclusion of the Civil War, be specific in the stages, wars, and concepts that shaped the United States. So looking at that question and looking at this broad narrative that we have established here, you have the colonial stage, you have the revolution stage, you have Western expansion through like Lewis and Clark that carries over its manifest destiny, that all comes to an apex with the Mexican-American War and the American Civil War. So when you look at it that way, there's five, maybe five, six stages you could describe. Colonial, you have the British predominantly settle the East Coast. They create settlements, there's some minor wars. You have the French and Indian War with the France, basically kicks the French out of all American area. The Spanish will come in later. They uh, colonize all the southern part, like Mexico, uh, Latin America, but we'll see them as later in the Mexican-American War, or the influence there. Then you have the American Revolution that breaks away from the British, and we establish the United States. Um, and once again, this whole concept of moving west becomes a huge issue because initially the British didn't want to deal with the Indians or the French and other problems, but the colonists wanted to keep expanding, and they keep wanting to go. They kept looking west. Carry that over to even the War of 1812. We have some disagreements with the British. We finally put off the British for good, um, and we start to look at like things like the Lewis and Clark expedition. We buy the Louisiana Territory, though we were already going there, but we weren't content with that. We wanted the rest of the West which is going to carry over into the Mexican-American War as we were invited into Texas. Texas gains its independence, uh, but we ultimately uh, annex Texas after they're a country. We make a deal to get the Oregon Territory, and then we go to war with Mexico, the former Spanish colony, uh, and take all the Southwest and what's called the Mexican succession. From there, the big thing that's going to predominate as we expand and have all this territory is going to be the issue of slavery and rights which is going to erupt into the 1850s with the border war conflict to Kansas, Missouri, and other areas, into the ultimate civil war in which the country finally has to deal, for once and all, the slavery question. That's a broad overspec. There's much more detail you could add there. But that's what I'm looking on that final essay question that's worth nine points. It is the only uh, basically cumulative or, uh, I can't think of, I've lost my train of thought there on that meaning, but like, for the whole semester. That's the only question that covers the whole semester. And if you can hit on those points, uh, I'll feel like you've understood some of the main things I want you to understand is America expanded and by the 1877 post-Civil War, we were literally from sea to sea, Atlantic to Pacific. How we got there is the narrative that I'd like you to look at a little bit in that question. That being said, it's been, a, it's been a joy this semester. I think we've had some fun, some moments. Obviously, we've, we've all learned some things on how to do this online dual credit format and myself just to teach dual credit from a different perspective. Uh, I look forward to doing this in the future and if some of you have uh, classes with me in the future hopefully we'll keep to make it better um, and I hope to make it uh, somewhat enjoyable. It's something you can learn and not be something that you absolutely dread at all costs like you all dreaded Undaunted Courage book. That being said, have a good day, have a good weekend, have a good end of the semester, always drink good coffee, don't buy crappy coffee. I got see me some good holiday blend here, Christmas blend from Starbucks, um, and have a good day.